theme for this weekend is distinctives of the new covenant and uh, I have spoken on the new covenant for 42 years I remember a story I heard of a great evangelist called D.L. Moody from this country 130 years ago he was having a series of meetings for a whole week and every evening he spoke on you must be born again so somebody kept listening you know he wasn't converted listened to this and went to him after the last day and said why do you always speak about being born again because he said you must be born again so why do I always speak about the new covenant because I want everyone to enter into the new covenant if you haven't you don't know what you're missing I personally believe that 90 percent of believers whom I have met anyway are living under the old covenant in so many denominations they're born again but they live by Old Testament standards they keep the Ten Commandments you don't need the Holy Spirit for that those commandments were given before the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost you can live a pretty good life without the power of the Holy Spirit example Enoch who walked with God Elijah who brought fire down from heaven John the Baptist who was the greatest prophet of all and Mary the mother of Jesus who must have been an extremely saintly woman and many examples like that I mean they are I cannot imagine any of them would all those prophets would ever engage in pornography or the type of things so-called believers engage in today and who still think they are born again so you see a lot of believers today are living below even the standards of some of the great men in the Old Covenant why is that the Bible says the God of this world the devil has blinded the minds of those who don't believe so that they don't see the light of the glorious gospel in the face of Jesus Christ and the same devil once if he didn't succeed there that means some people's eyes got opened and they saw the gospel in Christ and got saved his next strategy is to blind their eyes to their inheritance in Christ and I know this from my own experience because I went to what one would consider the best denominations in India when I was converted in 1959 59 years ago I never went to dead denominational churches I went to the brethren assemblies I went to the Pentecostal assemblies those are the most evangelical groups in India and in all the 16 years that I went there I never heard one message on the new covenant in 16 years nobody explained what it was and that's how I know it's not preached I never heard one message explaining that I must overcome anger in my life I never heard one message that I must be free from the love of money because in the Old Covenant there was no commandment which said thou shall not be angry the commandment was only thou shall not murder and in the Old Covenant there was no commandment about not loving money you could just keep on accumulating money there was no not a single message I heard which said rejoice in the Lord 24 hours a day seven days a week I don't know whether you've read that verse 24 hours a day seven days a week rejoice in the Lord that's Philippians 4 verse 4 I read it exactly but nobody ever told me I, I used to read it but nobody ever told me how I could get there 
No, I never heard a single sermon on be anxious for nothing. Nothing means nothing. Philippians 4, 6. I'm talking about New Covenant verses. There was no commandment in the Old Testament which told people you must not be anxious. There was no commandment in the Old Testament which said rejoice in the Lord always. There was no commandment in the Old Testament which says in everything give thanks. Ephesians 5.18 And I never heard a message on how to give thanks for every situation. So I know that a lot of people who are born again, I would say perhaps more than 90%, they've accepted the Lord, they got some type of visa to go to heaven, and that's about it. And there's no development in their life, and, and the result is gradually the devil leads them downwards. If you're not progressing, you go down. And that's why you see a gradual decline in the standards of born-again believers in the last 75 years, especially after the Second World War. My belief is that a flood of demons got released after the Second World War that have brought all types of confusion, all these false healing ministries, fake counterfeits of Holy Spirit's operation and uh, gradually Christian marriages, divorce takes place in Christian marriages. This decline, it wasn't there before the Second World War, you know. A decline everywhere and now you see the type of things that people are talking about but even in so-called Christian churches. So it's very important that the Lord has a witness on earth that stands up for what Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit came to do. And that requires a number of brave men and women who will stand up for the truth, whatever the cost, who are not interested in popularity or gain or money or any such thing, not even interested in large numbers, but interested in maintaining a, a flaming light, a pure testimony for the Lord. And many who start well, that's another thing I have seen, over a period of time decline. It's not how we begin our Christian life that's important. Just like in any race in the Olympics, how a person begins counts for nothing. It's how you finish. And look at the lives of some great preachers, how they started and how they finished. Started very well and it's pathetic the way they finish. And look at your own life and ask yourself, how are you going to finish? And I'll tell you this, if you're not forgetting the things that are behind and pressing on towards the future, I'll tell you, you will not finish well. And by forgetting the things that are behind, I don't mean just forgetting our past failures, which we would all like to forget, but forgetting how much progress we have made so far. That's what Paul meant. Forgetting how much progress I've made so far, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What was that high calling? That's, by the way, is from Philippians 3, 13. What was that high calling of God in Christ Jesus? It is God's eternal purpose for us that we might be conformed to the image of his Son. He ordained that from the beginning. He chose us not just to preach the gospel. That is secondary. When God made Adam, it's not because he wanted a servant in the garden. And when God saved you, it was not because he wanted a servant. He wanted a son and a daughter. 
Adam was made in the image of God and before he sent him into the garden, Adam's first day, very first day, was a day of fellowship with God. He was created on the sixth day and on the seventh day, when it says God rested, it was just a day of rest for Adam's sake. It's not because God had to rest. So that Adam could realize the most important thing is not work. The most important thing is not what I do in the garden. The most important thing is fellowship with the God who created me. That, that personal intimate fellowship. And that's why God made Adam and Eve separately. He could have made two lumps of mud and breathed into them together and made Adam and Eve together and united them. But he didn't do it that way. There's meaning in everything that God does. He made Adam alone and breathed into him. And when Adam's eyes were opened, there was no Eve. It was the first person he saw was God. And that's what God wanted him to know. The first person you must see in your life is me. The first person you must see when you wake up in the morning is me. Because when Adam woke up and his eyes were open, he saw God. There was a lesson there, if you want to see it. And then God put Adam to sleep and took a rib from his side and went and made Eve somewhere else. And when she opened her eyes, she didn't even know the existence of Adam. She thought she was the only human being. And her eyes were open, and who did she see first? God. Not Adam. She didn't even know there was a person called Adam. And God was teaching Eve, when you wake up in the morning, the first person you need to see is me, not Adam. How many Christians have learned that lesson? which God tried to teach Adam on day one. You know, the secret of Jesus' life was that he set the Father always in front of him. This is one of the things the Lord taught me very early in my Christian life. And it continues with me today. I'm a worshiper more than a servant of the Lord. It doesn't matter to me if I don't preach. It doesn't matter to me if I don't have an opportunity for ministry. Sometimes I've laid in my bed and say, Lord, you can, take, you can paralyze my body and take away my ability to speak or write or anything. It won't make the slightest difference to me because nothing can stop me from worshiping you. That's what I'm living for. I'm not living to preach. I'll tell you that honestly. I have no interest in being an elder. I want to be a worshiper. And that's what I started my Christian life with 59 years ago, and this is the way I go today. And that's why my life is so restful. All the responsibilities of the churches and problems that arise, I can be at rest in God because I'm a worshiper first. 